Amen. Please be seated. Let me begin by welcoming everyone who is first listening to me from Nations of the Earth online or from any of our social media platforms. It's an honor to have you in this place. I'm so excited. And I'm persuaded that mighty things will happen in our lives. Let me hear a better amen. amen. If that amen is loud, your miracle will come fast. Amen. There'll be a shift in your life after now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I started working on a series that says, Mighty walks through the hand of the Lord. Tell somebody by your side, mighty works by the hand of the Lord. My anchor scripture has been Psalms 44, verse number 3. Why we keep repeating this is for emphasis. So that at the end of the day, you can be able to read this without having to open your scriptures. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword nor did their arms save them but it was your right hand it was your arm and the light of your countenance because you favored them I keep telling people, if everything you have on earth came by your sweat, you are under a curse. I'm going to show you the scriptures. If everything you have, you have to labor for it to come. Everything you have, you have to fight. And you went into laborious works for everything you have now to come. Then you are operating under a curse. Because one of the causes given to Adam is that the Lord said, through your sweat you shall eat until you come back to the earth. So if you see someone keep saying, this is my sweat, this is my sweat, that person is laboring under a cause. This is my sweat. For by the arms of the flesh shall no man prevail. I didn't say eating from your labor is not good but look at what happens when the grace of god rests upon your life you put in a level of effort and reap results that is higher than this effort reap results that is commensurate a couple of years ago i was praying a prayer lord give me money to buy a car the lord said your prayer is wrong don't ask God for money to buy a land. Don't ask God for money to buy a house. Ask God for a house. Ask him for a land. Because a car can be given to you free. I finished teaching this and a lady picked new level and new accommodation. And screamed and said, Lord, I, I need money to buy my own house. And then she remembered what I said. Give my family our own house. That's how they were given one story building. One story building. One story building. A member of the family, they never expected it. Because of what you people have done, as my will was being written, I made up my mind that one of my property should be yours. And they were not qualified for it. So don't ask God for money to buy a car. Ask God for a car. What you need is what? What you need is what? Don't ask God for money to wed. Father, make my wedding go successful. Because somebody can say, I take care of the hall. Another person says, I take care of this. Somebody say, I hear. So what do you need? Because sometimes, oftentimes, we pray and we are pointing to God how to answer the prayers. We pray and we are trying to show God this is a way to answer. 
God might choose <laughs> to answer. In fact, oftentimes God answers in ways you don't even anticipate. So when the hand of the Lord rests upon a man, I've said a couple of things that will happen. One of the things that will be engendered is that divine speed is facilitated. Today I show us another important thing that happens when the hand of God rests upon a man. When the hand of God rests upon a man, there is restoration. Divine restoration is facilitated. Now let me begin by saying that the fall of man made man to lose his place. The fall of man brought about causes to Adam. The fall of man brought man into the realm of struggles and then stagnations. Get me Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 17. Genesis 3 and verse number 17. Then to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, it is not every advice you listen to. There are advice that are pitfalls and burial ground for your destiny. It is good to listen, but don't listen to everything. It is good to pay attention, but pay attention only when it is necessary. Hear everything, but don't do all. Do the ones you know that are so important and won't endanger your destiny. Don't because of love kill your destiny. Don't love your wife so much that you will eat of what the Lord has not instructed you to eat. That's the same thing that happened with Delilah and Samson. Delilah said to Samson, but you say you love me. How is it that you have refused to tell me the secret of your strength? How is it that you have refused to release the secret of your strength to me? And then Delilah beguiled Samson. And through that subtlety, Samson revealed the source of his strength. And the seven locks of his hair, which are representations of the seven dimensions of consecration that the Lord had imparted unto him through birth. These seven locks were caught and he lost his strength. I know Adam must have loved it so much. So Adam paid attention to the advice of Eve. Because you have heeded, when I read that place, because you have heeded, because you have listened, because you have heeded, that's why everyone must have the cement of spirit. Sometimes even your mom can be wrong, even your father can be wrong. One of our people here, the mother was pushing her to get married to a man who has been in three marriages. But the man is so wealthy. And the mother kept saying, it doesn't mean anything. And then the lady was being pushed until she ran to me. And then the mother, a member of the church, I called unto the mother. I said, did you go to investigate what happened? The mother told me, Daddy, I had tagged no kwafu for. Where are boy ends up a time? And then I told the mother, You want to use the destiny, mortgage her destiny because of selfish. By the time we were done speaking, she started crying. She saw her wrong. So even your mom can be wrong. Somebody said here, Listen, but don't heed to all. When Adam yielded to Eve, he ate of the very fruit. That the Lord God instructed them not to eat. The Lord said, Cost is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. All the days of your life. What's that all? It came on emphasis. 
a capital letter was introduced in the middle of a sentence and that is what how it is in the original Torah all the days not one day will be exempted all the days of your life you will be under a course what is that course it will be from one level of toiling to another look at verse number 18 both tons and thistles this is these are losses it shall bring forth and you shall eat the herb of the field go on verse number 19 in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you will be taken for dust you are and to the dust you shall return but what did Jesus do now look at this Genesis chapter 1 introduced the first Adam from verse number 26 this first Adam was made in the image and the likeness of God 26 to 28 and then chapter 2 verse 7 God bent down and picked up clay and molded it he brought about the flesh that would carry the, the spirit man he had created he breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul follow me now the first Adam was made that was made was made a living soul when that first Adam came the second Adam which is Jesus and the final Adam had to come this time around God did not make him in the similitude of a living soul God made him a life-giving spirit. Jesus became an improvement of the first Adam. Just like you have Lexus of the year 2012 and the year 2023 are not the same. There is an improvement. A lot of things have been brought into being. I need to explain this very uh, clearly. If you take a CD plate, a CD plate, and that CD is supposed to be master CD. I've done a lot of things. I started recording my messages with Rap City Jams. That was as early as 2003, 2004, 2005. So they used to give me a CD that they used to call master CD. Or you see anyone that has a song, it is always a master's. And from that master's, other duplicates will be made. Or duplicates will be made. If you take that master's and scratch it and keep scratching it until it is cracked, whatsoever is mass produced from the master's will be a replica of the cracked version of the master's. So Adam was supposed to replicate mankind. When sin came through Adam, it would be integral to know now that Adam, who is now the masters has been defined he has allowed defilement so everything that came through him also became defied get me psalms chapter 50 and verse number 5 psalms 55 look at what the psalmist said can i have 51 5 can i have psalms 51 5 Behold, I was brought forth. Thank you, my brother. I will read it. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. So the fall of Adam damaged the rest of creation. Now, what did Jesus do? Remember, the first Adam enacted a genealogy. Everything that came through the first Adam got corrupted. When Jesus came as the second and the final Adam, look at what he did. This building is about to collapse. Every renovation has failed. You have tried to renovate it. It has failed and is about to fall. What Jesus did was that he didn't come to build on the existing foundation. He came and began a new era. 
a new foundation was introduced entirely abandoning the other not just that the other was abandoning the other was collapsed as a rubble in christ so he came as the second and the final adam that's why the bible says, he that is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes so by the coming of jesus the cause that the first adam brought was annulled by the penalty of sins he paid galatians 3 verse number 13 would make more sense for christ has redeemed us from the causes of the law being made a cause for it is written cause is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessings of abraham may come to the gentiles so by the penalty of sin that jesus paid with his own life all the debt that the first adam owed was paid in christ and by christ by dying so when he hung on the tree that was where there was a transition a transition but do you when you are born do you just get into this genealogy of christ just like the first birth the introduction of the first birth comes through sex a man and a woman have to meet together donating their two chromosomes forming a haploid chromosome of 46 chromosomal number and then a fetus is zygote and a full child is born but this time around it doesn't come through the natural order it comes through the spiritual order with your mouth you shall confess him with your heart you shall believe so when you declare him lord justification takes place the human spirit is recreated and that man is born again something might not change eventually in terms of the physical looks but something had taken place because who the man is is the spirit man there has been a regeneration and it is that spirit man that the lord has now communicated upon the spirit of that spirit man the capacity to overcome the devil get me the scriptures 1 john 5 4 1 john 5 4 i'm gonna demonstrate it 1 john 5 4 for whatsoever is born of God overcome the world and this is the victory that has overcome even our faith oh the question is is it automatic do we have a child maybe two three years four years five years do you have a child there two years one year th three years just six months any child there fast get me the child let the mother let the mother carry the child and come fast you have to be fast man now listen This is your son, your first son. Is your husband in church? Come. Where is the husband? Come, sir. You need to understand this. Welcome, sir. How are you doing, sir? Welcome, sir. Now, this is your first child. Your, your third but your, your first son good so whether first, second or third now watch this what's, what's your name sir? Abraham Abraham Ugo Obu Abraham Ugo Obu did you hear that? what's his name? J no, the fourth I'm George Hugo David Ugo Obu did you notice something? Ugobu. 
Ugobu. Why? Why not Anike? Follow me. If you understand it, your life will change. So immediately he got married to this lady, gave birth to this child. This child automatically took his name, right? Automatically also, all that this man has has been wheeled to this child, right? At least a fraction of his children. This child receives a level of inheritance from him by just being born here. But I want to ask you, if this child remains like this, will this child ever step into this inheritance? Why? Because he's a child. So when the Bible says that he that is born of God overcomes, it is not automatic. That person born of God to walk into the reality of that overcoming nature must have grown. Aye. So it is not automatic. Even though he says all things are yours, read the following verse. He says it is released unto the sons. So it is those who have grown that can participate in it. So giving your life to Jesus today does not automatically make all the witches leave you. You must now grow. Did you hear what I said? You must now grow. You must now begin to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Until growth has happened, you can step into what is yours. Now look at this. How did Jesus bring us to the realm of restoration? Did he actually give us what we have lost? Yes, but in the spiritual places. Can I have your phone, sir? Can I have your phone? Thank you, sir. Your phone? These are your phones. Can I have your phone? <laughs> come, Senator, come. Leave your phone. You are the thief. So this man is a thief. He stole from these four persons. And then as he's about to run, my brother, come and hold him. You know how you hold a thief? <laughs> hold him very well. Uh -huh. And then, as a police officer, tell him to keep the phone here. Four of them. Then, who are the ones that have these phones? Come and identify your phone. Stay behind. Three of you, come and identify your phone. Identify and collect. Now, if you are asked to identify your own and you say it's a Nokia touch, stand. What type of your phone is your own? No, leave iPhone. What type of phone? What I mean, Nokia touch. Not, I know you want to mention this one now, but I, I'm saying it's Nokia touch. Say Nokia touch. Nokia touch. If you are the one giving it to, will you release it? Why? Why? Do you see what these guys did when they did? When they came, they started looking. They know what their phones are. Now, you will see that these ones who can identify theirs, collected theirs, but this one who cannot, if in the era of this Nigerian police force, if they ask you what is your phone, and you say Nokia 3, Nokia 3310, or Nokia Touch, does she still, does the phone still belong to her? No. <laughs> does it now belong to the police? But is the phone hers? What is the challenge? Identity crisis. Identity crisis. So what makes a man to step into his inheritance is when he knows who he is. They know not. They know not. I am. They know not. They know not. Therefore, they die like near men. The foundation of the earth is out of course. But I have told you, you are God. And all of you are the sons of the living God. Identity crisis. Who do men say I am? Jesus asked. 
And after that, he said, who do you say I am? He's trying to tell you that the real you is not the people people explained to be you. The real you is who you know you are. Until you have the real identity, you cannot walk in the liberty of this dominion. You can't walk in the liberty of this dominion. So why has these three great people picked their phones, recovered it from the thief, <laughs> thief or bomb? <laughs> Why was he recovered from the three of them? Or this phone recovered by three of them? And this one couldn't get hers back. Why? She could not identify it. But then all of a sudden, uh, what phone was taken from you, Nokia what? Nokia 310. Nokia 310. And then the police officer said, you say what? How can it be Nokia? And then you remembered and said, Nokia 310, sir. You remembered. The, the phone, the other, the one, your real phone now. Okay. You remember what's the phone? Uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max. iPhone 11 Pro Max. Immediately she remembered what happens. She will go and take what has. So restoration was released to us by God, but not every believer has walked into it. You receive your own the day you identify it. So there are a lot of people who have received theirs. Every blessing God releases is in the heavenly places. That's why the Bible says he has blessed us with all blessings in the heavenly places. God has done his job. The conversion to the earth realm is now incumbent on you. So if you are not receiving yours, it is because you have not learned how to convert it. That's why discovery is the first prerequisite requirement for recovery. You can't recover what you don't know you have lost. Suddenly, she's able to identify her phone. iPhone 11 Pro Max. Come. And then it's given to her. Was it delayed? Was it delayed? Yes. Did she receive it when they received the ads? Was it delayed? Who delayed? Is it God or her? So why is your miracle delaying? knowledge problem the day you know you will walk into it the day you know you will walk into it the day you know you will step into it the day you know the day you know the day you know the day you know you may not know that a believer can live for 50 years and not lay on the hospital bed it's possible it's possible it's possible it's possible it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible to live a crisis-free life. Oh, somebody is saying uh, that everybody on earth will suffer crisis. I want to ask you, Jesus was in that ship that would have crashed, that faced all manner of Euroclidus turbulent wind, the storm arose, and it was almost getting sinked. What did he do? He was sleeping when the stormy waters was raging. So it does not mean the stormy waters will not arise, but you will stay afloat. God never instructed Noah to take the fish into the ark. He gave him instruction for every other animal. He said, take the bed. Take every other animal for the fish. He wasn't instructed. As a matter of fact, the fish didn't enter the ark. So what was killing others is actually what the fish required to stay alive. It's called the covenant of exemption. Several years ago, I sat before a doctor who told me you can never father a child. I had a disease, toilet infection, 
that stayed in my body for several years. It was in my body for over 15 years, untreated. Until it began to send that pause all over my faces. Some of the marks still in my body. I would wake up with yellow stuffs where I laid down. My body literally decayed. And after I was diagnosed, they found two things. One was a fungi infection. The other one was a toilet infection, bacteria infection. And I was told I can never father a child. No sperm count. When I proposed to her, I told her I will never be able to give you a child. She said we will adopt. I accepted my fate that way. And up until then, I didn't know what was called erection. I would wake up and, you know, it was, I didn't know what was called erection. Until one day I was studying the scriptures and I read and saw, none shall be buried. Hi. None shall be buried. In the midst of my children, I said, is this place in the scriptures? I read it again. None shall be buried. None shall be buried. In the midst of my children, none shall be buried. All these people turning to look at who is saying yes. Sir. Can you allow them listening differently? That you chose not to talk doesn't mean they shouldn't talk. Did you hear what I said? Allow them enjoy it. If it's hitting them, some people when it hit them, they'll say, mm, this one's saying yes, I allow them. Did you hear what I said? Some are saying the queen yen dani may also so hand ye give message. Allow them. Allow them. Somebody say here. None shall be buried in the midst of my children. Oh, Gavalia Tai. I said, Am I one of his children? The answer is yes. I screamed, I got it. And then I picked up my number, I called him. I called her. I said, how many children would you want me to give you? And then she mentioned a particular number. I said, I am okay now. I am healed. She said, wow, what happened? And she took a bike. She landed. She was expecting to hear that a doctor gave me 15 injections. And I said, I saw in God's word. I could see the disappointment in her face. But that was the end. No treatment. Now, Listen, you would have met a pastor who is barren. Now, if I continued accepting that faith. But immediately I rejected that report. Isaiah 53 verse number 1. Whose report have you believed? For the arm of the Lord. Every report has an arm. You are under the rulership of the report you have believed. Because you are what you believe. You are under the dominion of your belief system. And today we are four children still counting. Now listen to the voice of the Lord. Restoration cannot happen until you discover. After you have known God. Those who do know their God. Daniel 11.32 shall be strong and they shall do exploit. You must now know who you are. Let me tell you the difference between Abraham and Lazarus. Lazarus thought all through his life everything there is concerning his destiny was to be laid down at the gate of a rich man to beg. The Bible says he desired to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. The dogs would often lick the sores of Lazarus. He was there. He was a believer. He was not less of a born again than Abraham. But Abraham chose a different path he knew that god who could recreate a human spirit can also make one rich so they came to god from different belief systems god never disturbed lazarus he never he left lazarus to his desire there was a, a man called lazarus who was laid at the gate of the rich man Desiring, it was not God who put him there, it was his desire. Desiring to eat of the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Watch, there are two mentalities. 
Lazarus would wake up one day and would be looking. Are they bringing the stuff? He was, he had been in, at that gate for a very long time to the point that even the dogs recognized him. The dogs were now friendly to him. To ease his pain, the dogs had to eat to lick the sores. He was there. But one day Abraham went to war and the king called him and said, take a portion of the spoils of war. He looked at the king and said, I know the journey I'm taking. One day I'm going to be the father of the earth. Let it not be said that you made Abraham of God rich. Did you see that mentality? The mentality is sufficiency mentality. Abundance mentality. Please bring it down. Sir. Keep it down. Keep it down. So who are you? Have you discovered who you are? Do you know who you are? We know Peter. We know Paul. We know Jesus. Who are you? Until you discover who you are, you cannot recover what is yours. Identity. Paul was writing, he said, an ear. H-E-I-A, -E, what we call here. An ear. Different not from a servant. That is this child you are seeing now, even though this child will be the inheritor of everything that belongs to my brother. But because he's still a child, he's not different from the servant of the house. In fact, the servant of that house has more authority than him. Because he has not grown until growth takes place. And then everything that is his will now be handed over to him. So most times we are praying for God to do certain things. They have not been handed over to us because we have not grown into it. Until you grow into it, you cannot receive it. Even when we, we are using just voice to speak in musco when there was no equipment i was still screaming those are the overflow the hall was 400 and something capacity 30 persons in 400 and something capacity i was screaming those are the overflow i knew that there are in my spirit i see an overflow how do you see yourself who are you some really summarize who you are now i want to say this in defining who you are your failure does not define you there are five things that don't define you number one your failure is not who you are number two people the what people say you are is not who you are number three the devil cannot define who you are number four your parent cannot truly really define who you are number five you cannot truly really define who you are then who am i i am who god has made me so anytime you want to know who you are don't look at your failure don't look at your antecedents look at what god said you are a royal priesthood a chosen generation a called out people called out to show forth the excellency of his glory yes i have done three abortions a royal priesthood not qualified enough a royal priesthood that thing i did did not touch my royalty the only thing is that it postponed it <laughs> you bought a christmas cloth for your child and then you're about to go out and the child came up came back dirty and then as the child ran back dirty we are about to go for Christmas. Why are you like this? What do you do? Do you wear the clothes on the town immediately? What do you tell the town? Campaign. Does it mean the clothes does no longer belong to the town? Campaign. Can wash. As soon as the child washes and comes, what is the child will be released to the child? So maybe you have done one or two things. It does not mean your inheritance has been taken away from you. It has been kept for the day your growth will happen. That's why prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will tell him I've sinned against the heaven and the earth. And I am not worthy to be called any of your hired servants. 
any of you i'm not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your hired servants before he could be able to say that the father shut him down and the father said let the celebration begin the father put on him a new raiment and then killed the fattest of the calf took his ring and put on his hand how do you explain it i was expecting that the privileges of that kingdom would be denied him to teach him a lesson sirs god does not teach lessons as soon as we come to him the bible says now we are new creatures now we are new creatures once you come back to him he gives you all that you have lost all you need to do is to take that step like the prodigal son did and return to him if anyone is in christ not if anyone is in church if anyone is in christ not if anyone is in department church department is good but in christ he is a new creation amplified said never seen before it's like seeing a dog with horns a rare breed if anyone is in christ never seen before if anyone is in christ never seen before he is a new creation all things are passed away all things are passed away how many abortions again 15 they are passed away oh you used to be a criminal they are passed away so the murderer is now Paul the apostle they are passed away Abraham the adulterer is now the father of all nations they are passed away all things are passed away and all things how many things all things all things all things have become new all things not few things all things have become new so there is a complete overhauling and a regeneration and at this time what is yours is released to you now i want to say this and i'll pray it is integral to understand that there is nothing so difficult for God to restore. As simple as that word sounds, this word is the very fabric weaved into the eternal values of God. There is nothing He can restore. Nothing. Nothing. Even if these things we are lost by your sin, nothing he can't restore. He called unto Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 37. Bones we are dead, dry, hopeless situation in the valley of the dry bone. He asked Ezekiel a question, can this bone live again? Ezekiel said, only you know. No matter how broken your heart is, God can mend every broken heart. Can this bone live again? Ezekiel said, I don't know. You only know. Because Ezekiel understood that this looks impossible. And then he said to Ezekiel, speak. Anytime God will recreate, words are vital. But these are not just empty words. These are empowered words. The Bible called Ezekiel a prophet. That's what made these words to be powerful. God did not just send anyone to that valley. Not everyone had the power to say bones live. So who speaks is more important than what is spoken. God must have brought you to the place of the empowered place so that your word can culminate in great advancement. Can these bones live? Lord, only you know. He says speak. And prophesied and he prophesied as he was commanded all of a sudden bones that were apart scattered remember these were multitude that died the skull bone began to look for the neck and then he found the neck there they started looking for the hand and there were very many of them so bones began to look for their bones like let's say A has a skeleton, B has a skeleton, C has a skeleton. Of course the skeleton of A 
the head of A cannot fix into the neck of B. So they started looking for their individual parts. And when they found their individual part, they were annexed to each other. And then flesh came upon them and they stood up and became a mighty army. Maybe they gave you a report that you have HIV. They gave you a report that your womb is dead. Your sperm is dead. It might even follow that it came through your mistakes. It was the error you committed. It was the mistake you made. Yes. You may have lost your marriage because of your error. You may have come backward in destiny because of the errors you have committed in the time past. Now you are in Christ. You are a new creation. All things are passed away. And all things have become new. What are you saying, man of God? Let me explain it. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The transliteration of that word, it's a representation of the word, a newborn babe. Now, I want to ask you something. If you, if you see a child that was born immediately in the hospital and the man rushed and said that this child stole my phone two months ago, will you believe the man? Will you believe the man? Why? This child never existed two months ago. So if the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. When the devil comes with accusation of seven years, I wasn't even born then. I wasn't in existence then. Why are you looking for the dead amongst the living? I wasn't even born then. The person that used to live in that house has moved out. Have you lived in a place that somebody moved out and one month after you moved into that house, someone came looking for someone that lived there? And say the person living here used to owe me. What do you tell the person? He no longer lives here. So you used to know me as someone who used to steal in Gariki. But now I have Christ. And you still confront me with that whole things that happened. I will tell you, the Ukotuku you used to know no longer lives here. He who is in Christ is a new creation. Never existed before. A brand new babe. All things are passed away. And all things. How many things? Oh, is it a few things? How many things? How many things? Is it a few things? How many things? All things are passed away. And all things have become new. So you can't question this child that was brought here. That last nine years is he, he had stolen. Because he wasn't even here last nine years. You'll be seen as someone that is insane. That's why I love this scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. He said there is therefore. Now. Hi. Oh, which means there was before. Hi -ya. There is therefore now. No condemnation. There is therefore now. No condemnation. To those. Who are in Christ. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the laws of the spirit are set them free from the laws of sin and death. There is therefore now no condemnation. I used to be a kidnapper. There is therefore now no condemnation. I used to be a harlot. There is therefore now no condemnation. I used to live in anger. But there is now therefore no condemnation. I committed abortion 11 times before. There is therefore now no condemnation. Anytime the devil wants to call the past back. Tell the devil the one that, you, that did this no longer lives here. The one that used to live here no longer lives here. No, the person no longer lives here. And then the, the person will ask you, but where is the person? You will ask the person, is it my responsibility to know? I don't know. But you have to know, why must I know? 
because you have been crucified with Christ if you want to know where my old self went to ask my father who took it I've been crucified with Christ nevertheless Paul said not I not I not I not I but Christ who lives in me for the life I now live is the life of Christ who loved me and gave his life look at what happened Jesus actually took his life and gave me his he took my life and gave me his do you know what it means a clean slate I started living the life of the Savior the life of a saint the life of the Redeemer whereas he took the life of the criminal and went to the cross and died for me so there is no judgment for me anymore tell somebody by side no judgment for me anymore oh somebody say it loud no judgment for me anymore tell that person no judgment for me so restoration is facilitated as i end in the next eight minutes the second thing for today that happens when the hand of the lord rests upon a man is that the rejected becomes the celebrated the rejected because of the want of time in the book of judges chapter 11 from verse 1 to 10 there was a young man by name jephthah there were all manner of uh, illegitimacy round about his bed his brothers put him away and said you cannot divide the spoil with us you can't share an inheritance with us you have no business with us but after he was trusted away he began to wander in the wilderness but a certain troops of enemies rose up against them and they knew that Jephthah was key to wield the sword so they went and caught Jephthah and said to Jephthah fight with us if we win this war you will rule over us and that's how they won and Jephthah became a ruler over them the rejected became the celebrated when the hand of God rests upon a man where you we are rejected you shall be celebrated now I don't know if anyone is listening to me I speak to 31 of you under the sound of my voice where you we are rejected you shall be celebrated I thought I would hear a loud amen that a man does not sound like a minute that a man does not sound like a minute we are you we are rejected you shall be celebrated there are part one of us in this place we are you we are rejected you shall be celebrated we are you we are rejected you shall be celebrated we are you we are rejected you shall be celebrated we are you we are rejected you shall be celebrated we are you we are rejected you shall be celebrated let me hear a loud amen three times Can I pray for you? By the unction on this order, I decree the God of the last minute miracle, may he release to you restoration to all that you have lost. Let there be restoration in this place. I didn't hear a loud amen. I prophesy restoration. I decree restoration. I announce restoration. I release restoration. I decree restoration. That amen does not sound like a minute. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. In the name of Jesus. of time another case study we are going to understand it a man David when the hand of God rested upon him the rejected David became the celebrated do you know that David was the eighth child in a very disorganized family 
David was a child that was forsaken, forgotten by his fathers, by his father and his mother, rejected. Psalms chapter 27 and verse number 10. Psalms 27, verse number 10. The Bible says, When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. So he was forsaken by his parents. He was torn and forsaken, abandoned, rejected by his parents. David was the child that was despised and ignored. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 11. He was despised, he was ignored. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? There remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. The third thing we must understand, the fourth, is that David was the victim of recurrent depression. David kept, because of the rejection of the father and the mother, because everyone rejected him, he lived in his, his life in abject rejection and depression. He was continually depressed. Get me Psalms chapter 42 verse number 5 to 6 and verse 11. David suffered depression all his life. Can I have it in New Living Translation? He suffered depression all his life. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior. And verse number 6 quickly. And my God. Now I am deeply depressed. Bring it New, New King James. I am deeply, deeply discouraged. But I will remember you even from distant Mount Hammon. I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the height of Hammon, from the hill of Mishpah. Go on verse number 11. Verse 11. Why are you cast down my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Yes, David, David, David was rejected by the parent. He grew up and suffered rejection. He was depressed all his life. David was a victim of unnecessary burdens. David was a victim of caricatures and mockeries. David was also a victim of multiple conspiracies and confrontations if you read one somewhere chapter 16 verse number 11 you would see that but what happens when the hand of god rested upon david number one david became preferred by god to be king amongst his brethren he became preferred one somewhere chapter 16 and verse number 13 he became preferred then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. He became preferred. A man that was rejected became the preferred. Number two, David became the reference king of Israel. He became the reference king. I want you to understand that the reason you are seeking battle today is because of the dominion you can't see tomorrow. There is something the enemy has already foreseen in your future. That's why you are seeing all manner of battles. David suffered more battles than all his brothers. He would have thought that God hated him. But little did he know that he was the light of Israel. The devil was fighting him to extinguish this light that God had communicated to him. He was the light of Israel. The reason for today's battle is because of tomorrow's dominion. The reason the devil is fighting that business not to stand is because a lot of people will eat from it tomorrow. So don't be discouraged. Don't be depressed. You look at your siblings. It is only you. 
that seem to have been held down everything you get comes through struggle and you've been asking is my own different yes actually your own is different because you are the light bearer do you know how light is generated light is generated through heat heat is the crucible that manufactures light so how do you want light and you don't want to suffer heat light is produced through the channels of heat yes yes heat has to be generated for light to be transmitted so suffering is the crucible that, that generates the heat that is quintessential for the transmission of the light then look at this when the heat is being generated joseph who saw the throne all of a sudden might get discouraged because what he saw is not tallying with what he is seeing the man who saw nations bowing down all of a sudden is in the prison for an offense he didn't commit and it's not two months it's not four months it's years naked in the ditch showed up in the market as a slave totally naked what he saw was different from the reality on ground may god give you an understanding to know that your temporary circumstance is actually a reflection of the glory that the devil had seen remember when the child was born even before the child could speak his name herod began to kill every child in that age ring because of what because he knew that a savior had been born they read his stars the astrologers and the three wise men came from the east and herod heard that today the prophecy that isaiah gave oh that judah shall produce a ruler and a leader that the scepter shall be in his hand and he shall be called wonderful counselor and then he rose from the day he was born everyone that was born up to two years even though herod knew that he was born the child was about a few days old he killed up to two years to ensure that even if the child grew overnight the child cannot manifest what was herod fighting because herod had read had seen what the child would be so what are those forces fighting because they know what you will become they know that fund in your hand will bring about emancipation to your people so there are battles so everywhere you turn there are battles i tell you this don't be discouraged when these battles come instead of turning to god who is your fortress and your rock you run to the one who has imprisoned you imagine someone who ran from a thief and didn't know that there were three and then the other one says stop running stop running stop running why are you running and then he stopped for the second and the third thief is he anyway safe they will hold him until the other one comes so the marine had been giving you battles and then they will tell you you have marine this marine spirit disturbing you they will now take you to the water to the marine <laughs> they will bring you to the marine that is <laughs> you want to run away from the marine and it is water you are going to run away from the marine they will take you to the one so that is you have even been running now they will take you there they tell you that some people are after you and it is native doctor's house the same family so in the days of your discouragement don't lose hope don't run to the one that has put you under a yoke who is the devil wait on the lord whatever the devil fights you with is where your glory is if the devil fights your marriage your glory is there 
if the devil fights you with pregnancies there is a seed you are going to carry that will bruise the head of the serpent don't be discouraged don't be discouraged don't be discouraged don't be depressed i know situations around you you look at your life and your life is a shadow of what you had anticipated read through the scriptures every messiah went through the same route jesus the savior was a criminal on the cross oh jesus the redeemer was a criminal on the cross david the king was a shepherd boy in the desert joseph the prime minister was a prisoner in egypt was also a slave in the slave market so they all were routed through the same route saviors don't travel their journey on the easy route it might be a lady everything seemed to be moving freely and smoothly for others but your own seem to have been tied don't be discouraged don't be discouraged there is this glory in 18 verse are things difficult now very difficult you feel like dying you don't need to die you hey don't commit suicide no 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 this word is sweet don't commit suicide don't die don't die don't die no matter what you do make just decide not to die don't die don't it is it is the it is the least thing that should come to your don't die don't think of it somebody say here i want to say this imagine if joseph had killed himself in the prison only to open his eyes and saw that the realities of his future was to be a prime minister people who kill themselves wake up at the other side of eternity and see missed opportunities and thrones they would have ascended rise to your feet wherever you are go to seven persons and tell them don't die tell them don't die tell them don't die tell them whatever you do just stay alive tell the person stay alive tell the person don't die oh Until my only gaze is you, Spirit keep brooding over me. Till I look more like you. Until I am deeper lost in you, Spirit keep brooding over me. Till I look more like you. All of a sudden, your marriage seems to be crumbling your business seems to be crashing you have lost your peace you have been depressed you are crying to the Lord for mercy you don't even know what to pray again you have come to that junction of your life that your faith is failing you your faith is failing you your time is passing and there is no marriage in view you have been subjected to mockeries cruel mockings oh. David says, I will yet hope in the Lord. Job says, I will wait till my time appointed comes. He knew that it will come. The question is, can you wait till it comes? That's the question. A lot of people in the process of waiting, just like Naomi, it was just a momentary scarcity in Bethlehem just a temporary scarcity in Bethlehem. She couldn't wait. And as a result of that impatience, she, she sojourned to Moab. 
and there she lost three most important things in a bid to go and get food she lost her husband and her two sons i know naomi even up until now with a regret and why he went why she sojourned to bethlehem to, to, to moab from bethlehem if they had waited they wouldn't die and they would have seen the visitations because later Bethlehem was visited by the Lord and there were sufficient bread to eat. That was when she now came back. But this time, there were four persons from a family that left to Moab. Only one person came back. Three had died. The husband, the two sons, Malhorn and Kelion, had died. That's what happens when you get impatient. Abraham, because of impatience, gave birth to Ishmael, who has become a thorn in the flesh of the freeborn until now. Anytime a man acts in impatience, he breeds Ishmael who wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Wait on him. There is a journey you are about to take to make things better. Don't wait on the lord he's coming faster than you can ever imagine wait on the lord he has never failed he will come through for you wait on the lord don't take that action wait on the lord there is someone that is depressed i know the battles of life are raging on every side and your life is turning wait on the lord he will certainly come through for you Hold somebody by your side. Hold that person by your side. Just two, 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 two. Hold someone. Two, two. Yes, yes, yes. Get a partner. Hold two, your two hands to that person. Anywhere, maybe you are more than two, you can do three. Begin to pray for that person you are holding. Pray sincerely. Tell the Lord, I don't know what this person is going through. If you are online, look for someone and pray for don't pray for yourself i don't know what this person this my brother this my sister is going through but lord heal his heart heal her heart let there be a new beginning let there be a turnaround let there be a change of story pray for that person you are holding Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will. I take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me